And I call these fresh rolls. Sometimes they're called summer rolls. Sometimes they're called spring rolls. Spring rolls are usually deep fried or pan fried. So these are more of a fresh roll or a, a summer roll. Um, I call them fresh rolls just because I wanted people to be able to make them in all seasons. So I didn't want to put a seasonal name at the front. So um, fresh rolls is often what you will find if you go to a Thai restaurant or an Asian restaurant of some kind. And it just means a roll that has fresh ingredients inside. It's not cooked at all. And it's usually rolled in um, a rice paper. Uh, so we've got brown rice spring roll wrappers and we've got um, white rice spring roll wrappers. So let me just show you one of these. And they look like this. And they've got ridges on one side, they're kind of textury on one side and no texture on the other. And I believe the texture side goes up. That's what I believe. If I'm wrong, let me know. Okay. Now I made, um, when I was testing this recipe, I made the rolls with both of these and they both work fine. The brown rolls don't look as attractive though. So I'm just going to use the white rolls for today, but I just wanted you to know that the brown rolls, brown wraps are available if you want those. I usually try to go for brown rice pasta and brown rice rice, but in this case, I'm just going to use um, the white. And then I'm also going to show you how to wrap these in some collard greens. So I've got some water on a low boil back here and when we're ready to do the collard greens, um, I'll just put those in there. And it just takes about 10, 20 seconds to um, kind of soften those collard green leaves. So we'll do that in a little bit. But first of all, we're gonna do the rice paper leaves. And what we wanna do is soften these, not leaves, wraps. We wanna soften these, that one broke. Let me get another one. They're kind of fragile. Um, did any of you ever do shrinky dinks when you were a kid? <laughs> We used to do shrinky dinks all the time. This just reminds me of the shrinky dink paper and you draw on it and you know, you make little keychains or whatever, and then you put them in the oven and they harden up anyway. Um, so I'm going to go over to my sink and just get some warm water. I'll let it warm up there for a sec. I have even read online when I was researching for this recipe that some people don't even use warm water. Some people boil their water. Some people just use cool water. There's so many different ways to do things like this. Okay. I like the warm water compromise here. All right. Because the hotter the water, the stickier the rice sheet is going to be. So we don't want it too hot. All right, so I'm just using a deep dish pie pan right here. This is about a nine inch pie pan. And this isn't gonna stay in the water for long. Actually, before I do that, let me just make sure I have all my fixings ready. All right, so that's ready when we're ready for it. Let me talk about the fixings first. So here we go. Mm -mm -mm. So we've got some cilantro, some green onions. I, I added some cucumber just because I had it, even though it's not in the main recipe list, it's in the notes. But I've got some cucumber here. I've got some carrots. I had some yellowish uh, orange carrots too, so I threw those in. And then I've got some mint leaves here. I've got some sliced avocado if you wanna do that. And I've got some um, lettuce leaves that I already have just I took the, the stiff middle parts out. Um, and then I've got some cabbage here that I haven't cut yet. We will do that. And I think that's it. Okay. So you can use regular green cabbage or you can use red cabbage. Um, and this is Napa cabbage or Savoy cabbage. And this is used a lot. It's a little um, softer than the other cabbages. And I think what I'm going to do is just cut a little bit off like that. And then I'm just going to go and make it really fine. So the idea with these rolls is you want everything cut pretty small, pretty long, pretty thin. 
We don't want any super big chunks. I have seen some videos of people making this where they put big chunks of shrimp or tofu or something, and that's okay because those are kind of soft. And but um, all this other stuff, we just want it really fine. Okay, that looks good. This is my eight-inch chef's knife. This is kind of the workhorse knife of my kitchen. I love that thing. And by the way, I do have an Amazon store. So if you want to check out all of my um, favorite kitchen items, you can go there. This knife is called a, the Dragon. And I think it was like $130. Totally worth it. And then this is the other knife that I use. This is a Mac. And this is kind of more my everyday knife, but I, I use both. This one is just great for cutting butternut squash or a big head of cabbage or a big onion or whatever. So I use both a lot. And by the way, people often will ask me about sharpening my knives. Um, there's so many ways you can sharpen your knives. This is just one of them. This is just an easy way. And there's honing and there's sharpening. Um, and honing is where it just kind of puts the metal back in line. Sharpening is where it actually removes metal from the knife to get it super, super sharp. And when I, I get it sharpened once a year at the cutlery store where I bought it. Um, but at home, at home, I just use this and I just drag it through. So these are inexpensive. You can get them pretty much anywhere they sell kitchen items. Okay, so I think we have all of our stuff prepared. Um, and I'm not going to use any cashews today. I just put that in the ingredient list if you wanted to put a little chopped cashews in there. All right. The other thing is once we dip our rice paper into the water, um, um, we don't want to put it right on our cutting board because it will stick. It's It'll get gluey. So you want to use a towel or you can just really wet your cutting board. I've seen some videos, people making this type of thing and they just kind of make sure their cutting board is wet too. But I thought this was a neat idea how you can um, just get, use a towel. Is that gonna be big enough? Yeah. So just get a, like a, this is just a napkin, a cloth napkin and I wet it and then I wrung it out. So we'll have that ready. Okay. And then I, mm, all right, I'm gonna do this off camera because it's not a lot of room right here. Um, and I'm just going to dip it. Well, I want to show you this because it's it's not. We don't want to just set this in the water. We just kind of want to dip it in like this and then make sure it all gets wet and then take it out. I mean, you don't want it to just sit in there. All right, let me move this without. All right. So we're just gonna put this on there and we're just gonna leave it for a sec. And during these few seconds, it will continue to get nice and soft. All right, I'm just looking at your comments. Hi everybody. Okay, good, good, good. Love avocados, I know. I love them. Are they even in that? Yes, they're in the ingredient list. And this is optional. This is the kind of recipe where you could use any of the stuff I have there. In the notes section, you'll see of the recipe, you'll see lots of other ideas that you can put in. So anything goes. You don't have to do your um, avocado. You don't have to do cashews. Okay. So the thing with this is you don't want to get it too soft. So that's why we didn't leave it in the water for too long. Um, and see, it's already it's already softening up. So you can kind of check on it as it's sitting here. And that's, this towel idea works really well. Just even the fact that I can pick it up like this is so nice. Okay. But it is sticking to my fingers a little bit. So that is a good idea. Maybe I will get just a little bit of water out so I can dip my fingers in it if they get too dry. Okay. And while, before I do that, I am going to put my collard greens in the water. These are some collard green leaves as I mentioned, is another option. They're nice and big, so they kind of mimic this idea, but I know some people won't wanna do the more refined wrap, so you can do the collard greens. Some people do eat collard greens just plain like this, uncooked. I like mine a little bit um, softened though. So I have a, a soup pot full of water back here, and I'm just gonna put these in there for just, 
just a little bit. And I'm going to get the best ones here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on these. You can, um, you can boil them or you can steam them. All right, I'm going to put the lid on. Then when I'm done with that, I'm going to take them out and I'm going to put them on this plate with the paper towels. Um, and I'll get back to that in one sec. All right. So the first thing we want to do is you could put anything down in any order if you want. But one thing that works kind of nice is to put your lettuce down first. So I'm just going to put, can we see that? Yeah. Um, let me move it a little closer. I'm going to put the lettuce down first. Now I have seen people put it in the center. They put it a little closer this way. I just kind of shoot for the center. But if you want to put it a little closer, like if you've ever made sushi rolls, I think they start like a little bit this direction. Okay, so some lettuce. You could also use like a spring mix. You don't have to use the leaves like this, but a softer lettuce works well. So like a romaine might puncture the rice paper. Okay. All right. And then you don't want to go too crazy with the fillings because you don't want it to be too big. And you don't have to put every ingredient in here. So there's some carrots. We've got a little bit of cucumber there. These are some green onions. If you don't like cilantro, you can use basil, you can use parsley, you can leave it out. But I like cilantro, so I'm going to put a little bit of that. And mint is a really common ingredient for this too. So just put two or three mint leaves on there. If you want to, if you don't want to go to the store looking for mint, you can leave it out. But it kind of gives it that nice pop. All right, a little bit of the cabbage. So you can see you don't need a ton on each for each roll. All right. And then I'm going to put a little bit of avocado and I've sliced this. Whoops. Um, I'm going to put one like that. And then I'm going to get another one. Um, put it like that. Okay. And let me just check real quick on my collard green leaves back here. My water wasn't boiling really vigorously, so I let it go a little longer. All right. And I have trimmed the hard stem ends off. So just lay it on the paper towels. And then if you have another one in there, I'll put down another paper towel. Okay, there we go. And you don't want to overcook those. Hopefully I haven't overcooked those um, because then they will rip. So once we get to this point, we're just going to gently fold it over and hopefully I have not overstuffed this one. If you've ever rolled sushi rolls, it's kind of the same maneuver. So you want to try to get it somewhat snuggy. But don't pull it so tight that you rip holes in your rice paper. And again, if you need to wet your fingers, that will help. Fold over the sides. And once that rice paper is stuck somewhere else on the rice paper, it's, it's staying there. So this, is, this has a little bit of a learning curve. Okay, but the nice thing about this compared to sushi rolls is once you once you're done like that, it sticks because <laughs> the stuff's like glue. So there we go. So you see a lot of green there because we put the lettuce down first. If you were to put down the carrots first, or the green onions or the herbs or something, you would see that right here. All right, you can also you can leave this hole, and I'm going to leave it whole for now. I might cut it a little bit later but I'm just gonna put it on this plate and leave it whole. You can cut it on the diagonal to make a nice little appetizer, but you have to make sure that the fillings inside are tight. Okay, so let me get my collard green over here. Okay. 
And maybe we'll put the dark side on the outside. Okay. Just checking your comments. All right. Hey, Margaret. Hey, Vicki. Woohoo. Okay. So as you can see, I took this hard end off. I do leave this stem in. Otherwise, your stuff's going to fall through. So um, now you're not going to be able to see anything through this one. So it doesn't really matter kind of the order that you do. Put a little bit of lettuce. You could also put some spinach in here. And then um, these carrots, they're, it's called julienne. When you cut the carrots like that in little matchsticks, you can cut, cut those using your chef's knife or you can use a mandolin. This is a mandolin and it's got these little tiny blades. You put the carrot under here and then you just go like this. So this is pretty handy and that's what I use to cut those. They also sell handheld julienne slicer things. Does anybody have one of those? I bought one once and it, it kind of scared me because you kind of have to push hard with the carrot and I did not love it. So I'm sticking with my old one there. All right, a little with the cilantro, a little with the mint. Does the mint go with the collard greens? Oh, well, I'll put it on there. All right. And then I've got the green onion. All right. And then I I got to put the avocado in. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. I'm going to have a good lunch today. All right. These are basically just salads in roll form. If you had a sauce that you liked, like our mango sauce that we're going to make next, you could put a little on the inside if you wanted, as well as dipping it afterwards. Um, but I'm not going to do that today. Okay. Collard greens are so great because they're so big. And unlike the rice papers with the collard greens, you can kind of give it that little tug back. Fold the sides. And then with the thick stem side, sometimes you have to kind of kind of crack that uh, to make it fold in and then just continue rolling it. So there is that one. Doesn't that look nice? Um, these do slice pretty well. Uh, I usually put my tuna salad in these and wrap it up. And the tuna salad is kind of sticky. So um, it works really well with this. But with the loose veggies in there, it's you got to be a little more careful. All right. So that is the collard green option. I think I'm going to do one more rice paper. And I'm going to try something a little bit different. Okay. I was I didn't make these for the longest time. I was just intimidated by these rice papers. It just looked too delicate, but it's really it's really pretty easy if you have these little tips. Oh, and let me put my my napkin down here. Okay. Does anybody know if the texture side goes up or down? I would think it would go inside, but I'm not sure. Okay. I'm going to turn off my boiling water here. All right, so that's getting there. It really doesn't take that long. Let me kind of shuffle some of my stuff here and uh, we'll do the mango sauce next. Um, okay. Okay. Oh, I moved everything and I need, I need stuff. Okay. So no worries. So we're going to put a little lettuce, a little, and you don't want your carrots too far out because they can puncture the ends when you fold the ends in a little cilantro and you can do all of yours the same kind of like I'm doing, or you can make different ones. So you have variety. Little green onion. All right. And then a little bit, did I move out? Oh, a little bit of cabbage, just since we have it ready. Okay. That's a big piece. 
All right, so we're going to pick up our end and we're going to roll it. And I'm going to wet my fingers because they're sticking. Now, this is what I was talking about with the peekaboo, and I'm still learning this myself. But if you want to do a little cutesy thing on the top of your see through roll, you can put, oh, I've used all the cute avocado pieces, of course. Um, you can put your cute thing, generally they do shrimp, but we don't eat shrimp. We are 100% plant-based here, no added salt, oil, or sugar. So that is what I do. And then we're gonna put another little piece there. And of course they have brown spots, but that is okay. If I was serving these to someone else, I might just cut those brown spots off. So I just put it in front of the rolled up portion on the flat part of the roll. Let me wet my fingers again. And now we can continue, fold over the sides, fold over the sides, and then continue rolling. Okay. And then when you serve it, your cute stuff is on the top. Don't look at that brown spot. Um, yeah, so that's just called a peekaboo roll. If you want to put something cute, it can be some little herbs there, um, whatever you want. All right. And also, I'm just reminded, reminding myself, this plate did not does not have any moisture on it. So maybe when you store these after you make them, put, a, put them on a wet towel like this so you can get them off the plate. All right, you guys. Um, and I'm going to cut those toward the end. We'll see how that goes. Um, the smooth side goes down according to the internet. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's on the outside. So it's nice and smooth and pretty. Oh, someone else said textured side goes up. Okay, right. Textured side up, smooth side down. Yeah. Um, hi, CJ. It's good to see you again. I know I've missed you guys. My last cooking demo was in March. So I kind of retooled things a bit and uh, got, got a little bit of help, which is so nice. Okay, so that's it on the rolls. You guys have any questions? That's pretty, that's pretty straightforward, huh? Kind of. Um, okay, so now we're going to do the mango sauce, and let me move these things in so you can see them. Got our mango, so I have most things prepared, but I am going to talk about preparing a few things. So generally when you have fresh rolls or summer rolls at a restaurant, you get a dark colored sauce to dip them in, or a peanut sauce, or some kind of sweet salty sauce. But as I mentioned, um, I don't do any added sugar or salt. So I had to come up with a sauce that would still complement the rolls and have that kind of um, Thai restaurant taste to it. So what I did was I left in the ingredients um, that were health promoting. So I left in um, mango, onion, orange juice, garlic, ginger, and a little bit of vinegar. And I left out this, the oil, the salt, and the sugar that normally goes into sauces like this. Okay. So we've got, and I'm just going to double check my amounts, uh, three quarter cup chopped mango. And I'll talk about that in a sec. Three tablespoons um, onion. This is just a little yellow onion. And we're going to be blending this, but I give you a measurement and ask you to chop it so you can measure it. If we didn't do that, we wouldn't be able to measure it. So um, we've got a quarter cup of orange juice. This is fresh squeezed orange juice. If you want to use store-bought orange juice, you can certainly do that. And then I've got one clove of garlic here. And you know I love showing my little garlic sleeves. So if you're not familiar with this and your garlic has the little annoying paper on it, you can just put it inside and then give it a little roll and that will help release the paper on the garlic. See, there's no paper on it. So that is just a handy little tool. And that's on my Amazon store too, if you're interested. I love inexpensive kitchen tools that make your life easy. That is one of them. And this is ginger. I didn't prep the ginger yet just because I wanted to show you in case you were interested. Um, has anybody never used ginger? It's just a weird thing. For most of my life, I just saw it at the grocery store and was like, oh, what is that? Um, 
but this is fresh ginger. It's great. It's in the produce section, usually near the fresh herbs. And my recipe calls for one and three quarter teaspoons finely chopped ginger. So some people use ginger, they don't peel it. I always peel my ginger because it just seems right. So maybe it's fine to eat the ginger skin. Do you guys know? Is that fine? Um, I just take it off. It just seems cleaner. And then if you're blending, I don't want those little pieces of ginger skin in the mix. Okay. And what did I do with my picker upper thingy? Let's see. There it is. This is a great tool. It's called a bench scraper or a pastry scraper. So when you've made a little pile of whatever on your cutting board, you can just pick it right up. Okay. So you can use a microplane to grate this if you want. Looks good. Hey, Annette. Or you can just use your knife. I think that's what I'm going to do today. You can also just estimate one and three quarter teaspoons. Um, but I'm just going to cut a bit off. Maybe I'll cut it in slices here first since I have a little handle on the end. I'm kind of out of the frame. Let me move in here. Um, so if you're going to do it using your, your knife, just get a little pile, cut it into little rounds, and then go back and forth. And again, we are going to blend this, so it seems maybe a little silly that we're chopping it first, but that's only if you want to get the measurement just right. There's also um, a, little, a little gizmo. Where is mine? Here it is. Um, this is my garlic chopper, which also works for ginger. This is a Tupperware product. You just put your gar garlic in here. Um, you can also do it for ginger if you want. And then you just pull that little string. So that's a great product. But sometimes I'm just in the mood to use my chef's knife. So just make a little pile, go back and forth. And of course I forgot to pull out my measuring spoons. So I'm just gonna eyeball that. All right, so today I'm gonna to use my little blender for this instead of my Vitamix. This is a Tribest personal blender. Luckily, it has a long cord. And I have my, my big Vitamix. Here's my Vitamix. Um, but when I have something that's a little bit of volume, I like to use a smaller blender. And here is the blade um, here. And then it comes with different size cups, tall cups, short cups. This makes three quarter cups. So I think I'm just gonna use the small cup for this. And this is called the Tribest Personal Blender. Um, I do have one in my store, just one, but they have all different packages if you wanna visit their website. Um, they also have the cups that come in glass if you prefer, but their plastic cups here don't have BPA in them, which is nice. Okay, so the instruction for this is super easy. We're just gonna put everything into our small cup. Maybe I'll move that for a sec. All right, so we're gonna put our quarter cup of orange juice there, our three tablespoons of a white or yellow onion, our one clove of garlic. We don't need to pre-chop that. And about uh, one and three quarter teaspoons. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that's good. G ginger is one of those things, raw ginger, if you put in too much, Oh, it can really be overwhelming. Um, so you might want to, if you're estimating like me, just start on the small side and then you can always add more if you want. And then we're going to add some vinegar for which I do need a little measuring spoon, but maybe I will just, uh, no, I will do the right thing and get the measuring spoon. Let's see. 
And of course, there's no teaspoon one up there, only a half teaspoon one. All right, so we're gonna do two teaspoons apple cider vinegar or brown rice vinegar. So I'm using the brown rice vinegar today, um, but you can use apple cider if you want. Just beware of seasoned vinegars because they're loaded with salt and sugar if you are trying to avoid those. So since I'm using my half teaspoon measurement, I'm gonna do four of these. Um, and I'm, I'm really into people doing what works for them. If I have met students, they, they don't do vinegar. If you don't do vinegar, leave it out. If you don't do garlic, leave it out. It's still gonna taste great. Okay, so did I get everything in there? Oh, and then the mango. Okay, so the last thing is the mango, about three quarter cups of chopped mango. I already did that here. So I'm gonna add that in. I prefer the, the smaller yellow honey mangoes for this, but if you can't find them, which I could not. Um, the first time I made them, I made this, I could, and then I couldn't find them anymore. So I just used a mango like this. And then the, the blade just goes right on there. Um, I love that mini blender. I know. Hey, Linda. Linda Dykes. Oh, uh, yeah. This is a Tribest personal blender. Tribest. T-R-I-B-E-S-T. If you go to my Amazon store, you can find it there, the, the one that I use, or you can go to their website, trybest.com, I think, and they have all different packages and sizes of cups and all that. But this is less than $100. Comes with two of these, two tall ones, lids, sippy cup lids, everything. And it's one of my favorite, favorite things. I also, I use this to make a little bit of salad dressing. I use it to grind flax seeds and nuts, and it's just so handy. I've heard a lot of people who travel a lot and they take this with them when they're traveling as opposed to a bigger blender. So before I blend that, I am just gonna show you real quick, um, cause it's kind of fun, um, how to cut your mango. And uh, the sides of the mango are called the cheeks and the seed of the mango, it's big and it runs through the middle. So you just, if you were, if you lay this, um, like this, it's just going to naturally go so the seed is parallel to your surface. And then you want to cut alongside that seed as close as you can. If you hit the seed, you just come up and go back down a little farther out. So we'll cut off both the cheeks. Oh, not bad. So you can see the seed poking through there. And then I will cut around, here, I'll show you. I'll cut around the seed so you can see what it looks like. It's just such an odd seed. So I'll kind of go like that. And then I'll stand over the sink and just no, 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 eat that. I will use this, but I'm gonna set it aside. So I just wanted to show you that. And then once you get it at this point, there's so many ways to cut a mango. Just search YouTube if you're curious of the other ways. But this is the way I do it. Cut it in about four slices and then I'll just eat it like that or to get the little chunks this is what I did and then I'll get um, a smaller knife and I'll just cut those out all right you do want a riper mango if it's super hard it's not going to be that sweet so try to find one that's kind of softy all right um, okay, just checking. Da, 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 da. Okay. All right, so this blender is very low tech. You can see right here the little notch. You just line this up with the notch and you press down and to the right. All right, there we go. So you just wanna blend it till it's nice and smooth. That looks really nice and smooth. All right, now we have a little bowl. This bowl is probably too big for this. Look at that color, mm, so good. You could also probably use this as a salad dressing. And 
And let me just see if I had any notes about that. Um, no, I already said all those things. If you want a spicy sauce and you have a favorite spice, like a dried spice, like a red pepper flakes or some kind of liquid hot sauce or something you want to add, you could add a little bit of that as well. Let me just taste this for you just to make it sure it's good. Let's see. So good. Oh my gosh, and it's got that ginger kick. So you might not need the hot sauce. This is so good. All right, let's keep that in view because it's so tasty. All right, so we're gonna come back to these. This recipe is for eight rolls, but if you're gonna have more people, you know, definitely double or triple the amounts. And on my website, when you're looking at the recipe, there's a the ability to go one times the recipe, two times the recipe, three times the recipe. So that's kind of cool. So I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut these just to see if it falls apart or if it stays together. So again, you can leave them like this or you can cut them. And if I cut it on this, it's gonna cut my towel, which I don't really wanna do. So maybe I'll just put a little bit of water on my cutting board. Now, the consensus seems to be, if you're gonna make these, make them within two hours of serving them because the rice paper will get um, dried out. If you're doing the collard greens, you can wait longer for those. So if you are gonna cut these, you just wanna cut them on the diagonal. You wanna use a sharp knife. Sometimes I wet the knife, especially with the rice paper. It just kind of helps it not stick on there. So, and then just, there we go. Oh, I think we did good. Look at that. <gasps> so good. All right, that, so see how that's really full in there? So you'll, you'll find your happy point of how, how much to fill those up. Maybe I'll just put these right here. That looks really good. All right, so let's cut this one too, just for fun. Again, you don't have to cut them. They're like little mini burritos otherwise. Um, okay. Look at that, yay! Now, if you were to serve these at an event, when we can do events again and we're getting together, no one's gonna look at that and go, that's health food, yucky, I don't wanna eat that. That looks like just wonderful food that anybody would like. And then people could take a little um, of the sauce. Do you want me to eat this for you? That's what all, they always do on the TV, right? So let me dip a little bit in here. Mmm, so good. That was so good. I'm impressed. When I was making these to take the pictures for the for the recipe post, they didn't turn out this good. So I don't know why they turned out so good today. Um, I'm getting better at it, I guess. All right, you guys, I think that's it. So if you have any last questions, you can um, leave them there and I'll see them a little later. Hey, Jason, your falafel patties are in the oven now. Yay, the falafel with the tzatziki sauce, which is a cucumber-based sauce. So good. Sauces, dips, they make it. Hi, Linda. Thank you. Beautiful. Have a great day. All right, you guys, that's about it. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for being with me on this first time back with my new little setup here. And um, I will see you in two weeks when I'll be back. Right now I'm doing first and third Thursdays at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And that is it. Thank you guys so much. And I'm gonna sign off now and I hope to see you soon. And don't forget to check out the Amazon store and check out the cookbook if you're interested in having more great recipes like that, like this, like that. All right, you guys, bye.